This week we're going back to the basics. I'm going to show you a lot of basic things that use the paint that we use, why I use it, and how to use it. Today I'm going to be using milk paint over DIY paint. I'm going to talk about the differences in each paint and how to get a layer blended finish. So I got this table and I painted it with DIY paint, one coat of the little black dress. Then I wet just dressed it and sealed it. It actually is pretty beautiful just the way it is and I could totally stop. But my design aesthetic is very chippy farmhouse so this really won't fit in with my space. But it's a great place to start off by layering on some milk paint over the top. So we painted this yesterday with DIY little black dress. It's been wet, distressed, and then sealed with DIY Big Top and sat for 24 hours. I went ahead and sealed it before I'm painting with milk paint, so that way it gives me a barrier between the DIY paint and the milk paint. When you're layering paint and you don't want the paints to blend or want it to chip all the way through to the black paint, it's a great way to create a barrier by putting the sealer on there and the longer you let that sealer cure, the better the barrier will be. I recommend 24 to 48 hours for the best amount of layers. So I've mixed up in my red Solo cup. I've got one part of the milk paint powder in Ocean from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint with one part warm water and just a splash of extra bond. If you follow the directions on your extra bond, you won't get any chipping at all. It adheres really well. And so I kind of just gauge it based off of how shiny my piece is and it's not an exact science. It's something that as you use milk paint, you kind of decide what you're going to do. And honestly, milk paint has its own mind, so you can't always predict exactly what will happen. But I want some chipping, but I don't want it to all chip off. So I'm hoping that splash of extra bond will give me the right amount of chippy. I used a fork to mix it up. I also have an immersion blender that I use for bigger projects, but this is just a sample amount of paint. When I'm mixing up a small amount, Usually a fork will mix it in well enough. If you're really concerned about consistency, I really suggest getting an immersion blender. You can pick them up on Amazon. I'll have Zeb throw a link below to the one that we use. I think it's like under 20 bucks, and if you have Prime, you have free shipping. Okay, so I'm loading up milk paint on my Paint Pixie brush. This is my one and a quarter brush. People often ask me how I determine which one I'm gonna use. In this case, this is what was clean. <laughs> um, if I'm doing detail work, I like the French round. And then if I'm doing a big piece, I really like the one and three quarters because it holds a lot of paint. But the one and a quarter is kind of a great all purpose. It's kind of in between big and small and works on most pieces. If you wanna get this paintbrush, the milk paint, the DIY paint, or the big top, you can pick that all up at jamierayvintage.com. So I'm just gonna come in and give us a coat of milk paint. This is going to actually take two coats before I'll have complete coverage. The first coat I like to go on kind of lighter and then the second coat will fill in the gaps. You want to make sure once you get the paint on there, like I usually get it in all the cracks, you come across with your brush and smooth out all your brush strokes so you have long fluid motions. It just looks better. Milk paint is very forgiving but if you can have fluid brush strokes, you're gonna get a better finish. One of the big differences between the DIY paint and the milk paint is consistency. So if you do the same project, you're gonna find that the DIY paint is thick and creamy, and if you need to, you might need even water it down. I don't, but some people do to avoid brush strokes. The milk paint, if you mix it based off of the directions, is gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit, um, thinner and more likely to drip, so be careful not to put too much on. But the nice thing about the milk paint is once it dries, it lays pretty flat, which I like. And once you get that second coat on, it's not gonna drip as much. The other thing about milk paint is if you do like a thicker consistency, just add less water. Just know that if you make it thicker on the first coat, sometimes it will chip a little bit more. But that is the beauty of milk paint, is you can make it as thin or as thick as you want. So the thing you want to know about milk paint and keep in mind, only mix up the amount of paint that you're going to use. All colors can start to gel in two to three hours. Mostly that happens with the lighter colors. The darker colors last a little bit longer and sometimes you can put them in the fridge and keep them for a few days, but you never know when something's going to gel up on you. And if you've added extra bond, I can almost assure that it will solidify and gel up. So only mix what you're going to use. Now in this case, I'm only doing two coats of this 
If I wasn't doing a chippy finish, I'd probably do three coats so a sample wouldn't be enough. But if you're going with a chippy kind of distressed finish, two coats is enough and a sample will cover this size of a piece. Now if the color was light, like a white or a super light blue, a sample probably wouldn't be quite enough to cover this piece. And for the black based coat that I did, a sample in DIY paint is more than enough to do one coat of black on a piece like this. In fact, you probably have some left over. I'm just kind of getting the paint on here and then once I get on the whole coat, I'll come back and smooth it out. Okay, so I'm just taking my 220 sandpaper on my sanding block and I'm going to get off some of the chippy. You can see that it chipped along the edge. It didn't chip on top or really the base. But after I get off all the loose stuff, then we'll do a wet distress. And if I have to, I can use my orbital. I wanted to stress it a little bit more and it didn't chip exactly the way I wanted so I'm using a damp rag. I'm coming back across and I'm wet distressing. It smooths out the paint and sometimes it'll reactivate it and get it to chip just a little bit more. You can see that got a few chips off there and sometimes I'll come and go both ways. And you can see that it we're getting multiple layers here so we're getting like the bottom layer underneath which was the original finish we're getting the black layer, and then we got the top layer. You can see that it wasn't super chippy before, but the wet distress really just takes it off and kind of re-chips it. And then sometimes even when it dries, it'll chip a little bit more, and then I'll hit it again with my um, sandpaper. Wet Distress is also really good on metal. I wouldn't really want to use an orbital sander on this. Now that we've sanded it, I'm going to go ahead and come back with the white wax. If you don't want it to be super harsh, you could clear wax at first, but I really want to lighten this whole piece up, so I don't mind if it's a little dark. I'm just using my wax brush and my DIY wax, and I'm just coming through and putting white wax over everything, and then I'll rub it in. So I'm taking my slightly damp rag, and you don't have to use a slightly damp rag if you don't want to, but I feel like that really helps blend it in. And I'm going over this white wax after letting it sit for about a half hour, and then I'm just blending it in. So you're gonna get rid of the brush strokes, and it softens it. So the white wax gives us a beautiful finish. So I'm using this clear wax to go ahead and add a little bit more of a protection on here. I'll wait two hours, buff it off, do another coat on the top only. Like on the base, I'll just do one coat because I've already white waxed it. But on the top, I'll have three coats of the clear wax and that's gonna give me a good durable finish. So if they put stuff on there, that it's protected. So I'm gonna go ahead and buff this in. And I wanna give you another tip. If you have a piece that's super chippy like this, 
If I were to use a liquid sealer, it might cause it to chip more. I'm not saying that I never have or I never will, but general rule of thumb, if it's super chippy, you probably wanna seal with wax, and then you use the liquid sealer when it's not super chippy. But sometimes I need extra durability, and then I'll use like a top coat on here or whatever, but not over the white wax. Hopefully in some future videos, I'll show you how to do like a white wash. It'll give you a similar effect, and then you can seal with a liquid top coat instead of wax. But if I'm using a decorative wax, most of the time I seal with a clear wax. When you're done waxing, it should feel nice and smooth. It shouldn't feel waxy. If it feels waxy, then you need to really buff to get it to be a nice and smooth finish. Also, Wax will take about 30 days to cure completely. I usually say give it a week and then you can go ahead and use it. Just be careful for those first 30 days, allowing that wax to cure completely. Don't tune out yet because Zeb's gonna include glamour shots of this piece and I really want you to see it up close because you can see all the chippy layers. I'll give you a brief rundown of what I've used. I started out with DIY in Little Black Dress. I sealed that with Big Top. Then we layered on Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in denim and then we put on the DIY white wax, then the DIY clear wax. You can buy all those products at jamierayvintage.com. And don't forget the brushes. We carry the paint brush and the wax brush. They're both paint pixie that I use today. Every project is gonna be different. So of course we want you to comment below. If you have a project that you're working on and it's similar but not the same, ask your questions. We can link you to other videos, hopefully help you out. We always want you to make your DIY dreams come true. Don't forget to hit that notifications button because we're gonna have more videos this week all about basics, furniture finishing, and all the paints I use and why I use them. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.